guys, hope you're well. So, we're making blackberry wine again because, well, I love blackberry wine. All different types of blackberry wine. I really like um, my wines dry, especially blackberries. Other fruits, sweet, perfect, because they taste like the fruit. But blackberries, they're the closest thing you're gonna get to a red wine without using grapes. Yeah, that's just, that's just how it is. Now, the last video, we did something a little bit different. We went for quality over quantity, and we ended up with some fantastic wine. Now, truly magnificent wine, really, really good. Um, but at the same time, that was equivalent to using eight kilos of blackberries, though we did get a lot less. It's just how it goes. We use freeze distillation. Instead of going for hard, hard alcohol, we went for flavor. It's how we do it on this channel, how we roll. So we're going to be making some blackberry wine and uh, I'm going to be trying to use some grape concentrate to give it some extra body and extra flavor and see how it compares to, well, some of the tastier wines that I've made. So that's what we're going to do. Let's do that. So because we're going for simplicity, for a change, I didn't sterilize this with bleach and washing up liquid or a sterilizing tablet, anything like that. I actually scorched it using boiling water. I know this particular mayonnaise tub, brewing bucket, can take a boiling water scorch. That sterilizes just as well as the thin bleach, but you don't need to rinse it out if you don't want to. Just pour it away and you're good to go. So uh, our blackberries are wild and they have wild yeast and all sorts on there, but they are frozen. So the first step is dumping them in the bucket because, well, that's what we need to do. So our bucket is, uh, yeah, it's pretty much almost half filled with blackberries. That's why I chose a much larger bucket than I need. It is going to take up a lot more room because, well, displacement. It will let out some juice as the time goes on, but basically we're just going to aim for a gallon working off measurements and then uh, the rest will work itself out, I'm sure. So now our blackberries are in there, we're going to sterilize or kill off all the wild yeast that is only on the outside. In theory, all the bits in the middle, all the juiciness is uh, sterile or as close to sterile as it's going to get. So uh, in goes, cheeky, two liters of liquid, just making sure to coat the blackberries And we're going to need another two liters because, well, this is going to cool down quickly and uh, we've still got to add in all the, uh, the rest of it. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Well, I do apologize. It was actually 1.5 liters. I misread the line. <gasps> so that's actually only been 1.5 liters. The blackberries have basically halved in size. It's now only taking up a quarter of the demijohn bucket, whatever. Um, and the water has cooled down now to, um, yeah, pretty much ice cold. So in goes another liter and a half of boiled water. Looking lovely. And it's starting to get warm now. Ah, that's hot. Almost as if. Give it a swirl. Oh, that smells really good. Um, it really smells of blackberries. Almost as if we're making blackberry wine. So it is warming up now. So I need another liter and a half of water to make us get to that magical one gallon mark. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna boil the kettle again. Cool. Right, it is the last 1.5 liters. This is now evened out in temperature, giving it a, a little swirl just to make sure it's all sort of even so I can tell roughly where it is. It is mildly warm to the touch now. So because this is the last 1.5 liters, and I will be using a spoon, I'm gonna go ahead and scorch it because I'm not sterilizing. The only thing that has been sterilized using actual normal sterilizing stuff is the hydrometer. Doesn't do too well if you uh, try and pour boiling water over a sealed glass vessel. So uh, scorching my spoon and adding in the extra water. There we go. Can 
once that's been caught, and stick it there. There we go. Now I wanted it to be a little bit warmer so the sugar dissolves easier. I mean, it's still, I can still touch it even though this is boiling water. The first load was ice cold, the second load was still relatively cold, and this one, it's just starting to steam now, but still pretty, pretty good temperature. So since this is nice and warm now, I've sterilized my spoon. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my sugars in the form of uh, grape and uh, sugar. Oh yes, and since it comes in a lovely measurement of one kilo, you don't have to weigh it out. In it goes. So delicately done. In goes my lovely grape concentrate. How does it smell? I mean, because it looks really thick. It smells pretty good, actually. It smells almost like jam. Yeah, grape jam. In it goes. Right. Just a little bit of cold water to swell this out. There we go. Just a little bit of water in there, so just seal it. Now, that is dark stuff. And in it goes. Now comes the fun part. Using our scorched wooden spoon, stir in all of the sugar and make sure to beat the hell out of all the blackberries. So this is probably gonna take a couple of minutes. So I've been stirring this for a couple of minutes to make sure the sugar has been dissolved, making sure to, well, basically beat up all of those blackberries. The more we rupture them, the, the more juice comes out, the easier it is. And uh, it also gets a little bit of oxygen in there. You don't need to go nutty with oxygenation. You just need to, well, make sure there's some in there. Hot water does have less oxygen in there. So going on that theme, because I'm gonna have to beat these blackberries up for another minute or two, it's a really good time to add in your yeast nutrient. Now, we are slightly pushing the yeast that we're gonna be using, because well, like 250 grams of sugar in here, and the kilo of sugar that we added, and the sugar in the blackberries, which we haven't accounted for, because well, it's a pain to work out, and plus the sugars, and the liquid in the blackberries are going to change the alcohol slightly. So basically, I leave it as it is and only work off the sugar I add in, because well, the liquid content and all the rest of it kind of balances itself out. So since that is the case, I'm gonna add in two teaspoons of yeast nutrient. That just makes sure that we're gonna get the maximum amount of yeast activity. That's the word that we're gonna get. So uh, back to bashing, because it's fun. If you really, really, really want to, because I know I do, once you've finished whipping it around a bit, you can use clean hands that you've washed. Not picking your nose, don't, don't do that. And then we can go in and squish these berries, because well, they're just full of juice. Oh, look at all that. And it's fun, and who doesn't like to get messy? And it's a lot quicker. And uh, the result looks like I have been massacred. <laughs> that is, uh, yeah, oh, how am I gonna take the microphone off? I didn't really think this through too well. Uh, yeah, how does it taste? Good. Ooh, it's got a little bit of a tart edge to it. All right, let's see. Can I make over the way? Right. So, I've made a bit of a mess, but uh, it's looking really good. The blackberries have been mashed. Uh, I've got it all over the place. It is a deep, dark purple color, uh, partially due to the fact that there's blackberries and the grape concentrate, which is uh, really good. It has been oxygenated enough and it is cool enough to stick your hands directly and it is just slightly warm. It's around the 25 degree mark. So 
that's still pitching temperature, so we don't have to worry too much about it. We can pitch straight away. Obviously, if yours is too warm to handle and uh, yours is close to 30 degrees, don't do it. Leave it. Put it in the fridge for 20 minutes, something like that. So uh, we've got our hydrometer and we can put it directly in here because it is about the right temperature. And let's see what our potential alcohol is. Just uh, let this work itself out. Give some of bump. No, it's staying constant. And oh, there we go. So with the squishing from all of the, the juicy stuff, and maybe this isn't exactly the same. We were working off white grape juice concentrate, and this is, well, red grape juice concentrate. It is saying, ooh, it is 11 and a half percent, which is 1.074. Yeah, around there, 7274-ish, close enough. That's perfectly respectable for a red wine. And it tastes really good too. Never gonna argue that this doesn't taste bad because it tastes really good. So the yeast I'm gonna be using, I'm keeping it nice and simple. It is just the Gervin's Universal Wine Yeast. I uh, did, uh, someone was like, what brand do you use? Doesn't matter, it's universal. Use whatever you want. Uh, the only people that make some big hoo-ha about universal wine yeast is Larvin. Um, they're like, oh, you can use it for restart and all the rest of it. Like, you can do that with pretty much any yeast. So just a little sprinkle, like so, just on the surface, and that's as done. I mean, all I've got to do is put the lid on and uh, we have created wine. Really handy to know. So I'm just gonna clean up and I'll be right back. So I've gone ahead and I've cleaned up a little bit, wiped down the side. Um, it's got a bit of blackberry staining, but bleach does get rid of blackberry stains uh, off of your worktops really, really easily. So the only thing we've got left to do now is uh, stick the lid on. So put it on, close it on three sides and leave the last bit off. Otherwise it's gonna pop off. And you don't want that because well, if you disappear off and it pops off completely, it can get infected, but it is an interesting and rather easy brew. We used none of the usual things really. I mean, we used our hands. We always use our hands, um, but we didn't use our usual sterilizing solution. We used boiling water as a scorching agent. It was already clean, so if it's dirty, wash it first if you're gonna do this. But it should be rather interesting. There was one kind of thing that shocked me a little bit, a little bit odd in uh, my opinion, which was, it was only 11%. Uh, usually these grape concentrates bump up the percentage by about one, one percent, one and a half. And there's also sugar in the blackberries as well. But thinking about it, we use the kettle as a measuring device and they're not accurate. So there is probably over one gallon, even though the uh, blackberries are taking up a bit of space. And uh, as well, the juice from the blackberries inside here, there is more liquid than there is sugars. So probably a pretty good reason why. But apart from that, everything went really smoothly. It will be good to see if it works because well, we followed the basic rules of home brewing. We aerated just enough. Um, we used enough fruit. We added the double amount of yeast nutrient because well, I was expecting this to be a little bit higher in uh, alcohol percentage, but it still won't really affect the end flavor. So it all worked out rather well. The yeast will have a party. It's pretty cool. So I really hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Don't forget to check out some of the other ones and well, subscribe if you feel like it. Carry on homebrewing. See you later.